How's it going you guys? So today we have a really fun video. We are going to go over the hardest problem on leak code and it's called valid number and it has an acceptance rate of 14.7%. I solved it for the first time yesterday and I did it in one try. Okay, I lied. I did it in many tries and I actually attempted this problem many years ago when I first, you know, went on leak code and I there's no way I could solve it back then. And so now, coming back years later, I was finally able to tackle the problem with many hiccups. This problem is actually currently being asked at Facebook and LinkedIn. So without further ado, let's get into the problem. The description says, validate if a given string can be interpreted as a decimal number. So they give you a ton of examples that display whether the string is considered a decimal number or not. And then it says, note, it is intended for the problem statement to be ambiguous. You should gather all requirements up front before implementing one. However, here is a list of characters that can be in a valid decimal number. So we have numbers 0 through 9, the exponent e, positive negative sign, plus or minus, and then finally, a decimal point. Of course, the context of these characters also matters in the input. The reason why I think this problem is so hard is because there's so many different edge cases that you have to consider. I honestly have no idea how someone could solve this in a one hour interview. And I, it really shows because this problem got 4,150 dislikes. So how do we solve this problem? When we're looping over our input string, we're going to be checking the characters to determine if they are numbers, zero to nine, the exponent E, if they are the signs, so plus or minus, the decimal, and then finally any other character. So any other character meaning a space, a dollar sign, uh, a letter besides E. So there's many different types of cases we have to handle. So for each of these cases, we're going to break down what would make the string not valid. So let's go over the decimal cases where it would break our input string, meaning it would not be a valid number. So in this first example, we have more than one decimal. In any case where we have more than one decimal, this would not be a valid string. And then in the second example, and this is kind of why this problem is downvoted so much because it doesn't really make much sense. So this decimal comes after the E. So anytime a decimal comes after an E, then it's immediately not a valid number. So now let's talk about when we have the exponent E in our string. If we were to have an E at the very end of our string, this would be considered not a valid number. In the second example, if we were to have more than one E anywhere in our string, then this is immediately not a valid number as well. And then in these last two cases, this is what kind of messed me up when I was trying to solve this problem, is if we were to not have any digits prior to, to the E, then this would not be considered valid. So in both of these cases, there were no digits, 0 through 9, before the E in this case. So both of these are not considered valid either. But let's say we had the string 1 dot E123. This would be considered valid because there is at least one number before this E character. So there's three different cases we have to handle when we encounter an E character. The first, if the E is at the end, if there's multiple E's, or if there's no digits before the E. Now we need to handle the cases where we encounter signs, either a plus or a minus. So in this first example, we have a plus operator directly in the center between two digits. This is not considered a valid number. The way we incorporate signs in strings to be a valid number is if the operator is directly in front of the digit and nowhere else. So if we did plus 12, that would be a valid number. In this second example, we have a minus that takes place after this E, but since this minus is in between 
the three and the one, this is considered not valid. But there is an extra edge case that we could have more than one sign. And this actually really threw me off when I was first writing this. Say we were to have the string plus one dot three e minus two. This would be considered valid. So we have to handle the case where there is an operator, uh, a sign, a plus or minus, directly after an E character. That is considered fine. And then finally, we have a case where our sign is directly at the very end. Anytime our sign is at the very end of our string, this is immediately an invalid number. So the final case we have to handle is if there's any other type of character in our string. So if we encounter a character that is not a decimal, not the numbers zero through nine, not the E symbol, and not a sign specifically plus or minus, then we would immediately return false from our function showing that this is not a valid number. So in this first example, we have two spaces in between these digits in this string, and that would immediately tell us to return false from our function since we have spaces. In the second example, we have the character A. That is not any of the characters that we want, so this is not valid. And then finally, in this last example, we have the division character and then the dollar sign character. We would return false immediately from this as well, not a valid number. I know that was a lot to go over. I know there's so many different edge cases that we have to consider, but I'm going to jump into the code. And as I'm writing it, I'm going to show you guys which parts of the code are checking off all of these cases. Okay. So we're given a string S and we need to return true or false, whether this is a valid number or not. So the first thing we can do is let's just check if our string is null just for our sanity. So if s equals null, then let's just return false. And then what we want to do is we want to trim our string. Because if you look in these examples over here, you can see like in this example, this is considered true, negative 90 e3. But we can see that there's spaces before and after this string, but it was still considered a valid number. So we have to make sure that we trim our string before we do any logic on it. So let's do that. If we did s equals s dot trim, that handles that. So now we're going to need a couple of different Boolean variables to keep track of all of these different edge cases that we'll have to consider. So the first Boolean variable we're going to need, it, we can call it digit scene. And by default, this can just be false. And then the second Boolean will be decimal scene. And this can be false initially. And then finally, as you can probably imagine, it'll be E scene. So these Boolean variables will tell us if we have seen that type of character or not as we are running through the string. So now let's loop over our input string. So we're going to say i is less than s length. And let's just extract the character. So you can say char c s char at i. And so we need to check a couple different cases. The first thing is if the character is a digit. So if the character is a digit, we're going to do some logic there. Else if the character is a decimal, we'll do some logic there. Else if C is the character E, we'll do logic there. Else if C is a sign, so if it's a plus or it's a minus, we'll do logic there. And then finally, this will be where C is not a character that we were looking for. So if that is the case, if we make it to this else statement, we know we can just return false from this function. So that's going to handle all of these edge cases over here. So let's cross them out. 
So now let's start implementing the logic. Let's start off with if our character is a digit. All we have to do here is we can just say digit scene is now true. We're just flipping that Boolean. So we have seen a digit. Now, if we encounter a decimal, we need to check if decimal scene is true already. So if we said if decimal scene, if that's already true, then we should return false. So that will handle the case where we have multiple decimals inside of our string. So we can check that off as well. And then the other case we're going to handle in here, we could say if decimal scene or if E has been seen. Because remember, any time there is a decimal directly after an E, then it is not a valid number. So we can check off that edge case now. And then finally, inside of here, all we have to do is flip decimal scene. So we can say decimal scene is now set to true. So now let's handle the case where we encounter an E. So the first case, is if e is at the very end of our string. So we can say if i is equal to s.length minus 1, the very last index, then we know we should return false. So we can check off that case. The next thing we need to check, so we could say or e is seen. If e seen is already true at this point, that means we have more than one E inside of our string, which we do not want. So we can handle that case with this check as well. And then finally, we can say if a digit has not been seen, then we return false. And this will handle the, both cases where say we had a period directly before the E, but there were no digits before that E, or if we just had maybe E12, there were no digits before E. So if we check if digit seen Boolean is false, then we know we haven't seen a digit thus far, and that would handle both of those cases. And then finally, all we need to do is flip E seen to true if this, is, this if statement is not executed. So we can just say E seen is now set to true. Okay, now we need to handle the cases where we have signs, a plus or minus. So the first case we need to handle is if there is a sign in between digits. So to check this, we could say if i is not equal to zero and s dot char at i minus one is not equal to the character E, then we return false. So this is going to handle the case where we have a sign, a plus or minus, in between digits. So if you were to think about if we had 12 plus 34, this would immediately catch it because i is not equal to 0 and our previous character is not an E, then we just return false. But say that we had plus 12 as our string, since the plus is at index 0, this would not execute. And this also handles the case where say we had the string 12e plus 34. That is still valid because the plus or the minus operator that comes directly after the e character is considered OK. So that's why we have to do this extra check. If the character at the previous index is an E, then that means it's still a valid string. But if it's not an E, then it's not. So that's going to handle both of those cases. And now the last case we need to handle when we encounter a sign is if the sign is at the very last index. So to do that, all we have to do is we could say or I is equal to s dot length minus one. If our sign is at the very last index, then we should return false. So that handles that case as well. And so now the last thing we need to do is just return digit scene. 
The reason why we're returning digit scene is imagine we had the character just a decimal. If we had only a decimal, we would get through this for loop just fine because we'd go to this else if C is a decimal and then we'd set decimal scene to true and then we'd come out here and we'd say, oh, we need to, we haven't seen a digit yet. And if we haven't seen a digit yet, then it can't be a valid number. So that's why we have to return if a digit has been seen or not. This also handles the case where we just have the character E. If we just have that E character, then it is not considered a valid number. So we have to make sure we return digit seen. So that's going to handle both of those cases as well. So let's just make sure that this code works. So let's submit it. And there we go. It worked. So our time complexity for this problem is going to be big O of N. We have to loop over every character in our input string. And then our space complexity is actually constant. We don't initialize any extra memory in this algorithm. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was a super fun problem to solve, even though it has a lot of dislikes. It's cool solving a really hard problem. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys to know how to solve this. If you are planning to interview at Facebook or LinkedIn, who knows, maybe you might get this problem. But anyways, guys, have a good one. Peace.